Did you guys see the cable cars crossing the river? I'm gonna do that. G'day guys, Tills20 here and welcome back to Sichuan Province. We're gonna kick today's episode off with a live play and I did say that I wasn't gonna do very many of these live plays in Sichuan Province, um, mostly because I was concerned about the frame rate. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, the frame rate is just really good at the moment. So I figured let's just make the most of it and do a couple of live plays. Plus, I wanted to make some changes in the city. I've already started making a couple of changes over here which I'll talk about, but I figured we'll do that on a live play. I'll talk about it and then we'll get into the build. If this is your first time seeing this city, this is the city of Zhejiang. Um, definitely not pronouncing that correctly, but uh, this is a city that I'm creating based off the Chinese city Chongqing in China, and I'm embedding a lot of my own footage and experiences into it. So if you're interested in watching me chip away at this build, then um, hit subscribe and follow along and let me know if you do so I can um, meet you guys. And today we are gonna be making some pretty big changes, um, mostly to this section here. Now, I'm pretty sure this is what we're going to be spending most of the episode doing, but we'll just have to wait and see. Now, the really cool thing about Chongqing is that the downtown is on this, like, real slither of land. And I think that is really interesting because you don't usually see that. Mostly downtowns are in probably the section of um, the city that has, like, the most space to be able to, like, spread out. Whereas um, Chongqing is just, like, built on this absolute slither. So I, I kind of want to do something similar in this city, too. Now, that was sort of my idea going in just in general, but I've actually given myself far too much land, as you can see. Um, this section here, I think I can just get rid of it. So I'm going to change the path of this river. Um, I'm going to snake it further around here. So it's going to do a bit of a bend and then carve around here and then bend over here and probably, probably hug a bit of this mountainside here and then um, connect back up to where it was before. And because we're changing that, I also want this mountain range to um, also follow that river because that is generally uh, the contours of the lands. The river is in the middle and the valleys are on, so the mountainous sides are on the on either end. And the downtown for me is here and the biggest buildings are here. So that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. I don't really want the biggest buildings too close to the riverside, but... Uh, we'll just have to see what happens. That's not the end of the world if that ends up happening. So that's what I'm going to do in this episode. We'll have to um, change where some of these bridges are too and the way that some of the road layout is because um, it's going to get a bit messed up. Um, also, I wanted to add something in this section here, but um, I don't really know what to add. Um, I'm going to put it to you guys. I want something really unique. Um, the actual city of Chongqing has this new development that was um, built pretty much in this section here. It's really quite iconic and unique. I've slapped some pictures up of it right now for you guys. But um, I want to do something similar, but I don't really know what. And I definitely don't want to copy the same building of Chongqing, but I do want to do something fairly similar. Um, something that is unique to this city and something that is um, just well fitting in this environment. Because it is just such an iconic and such a focal point for this city. If you have any suggestions, then let me know. And if you want to link any buildings that you think I should add there, then um, hit me up. Because I think, yeah, let's not waste this area. I think it deserves to have something really cool. Maybe even an opera house. <laughs> I don't know. That might just be me because I'm a bit biased because of Sydney. Let me know in the comments. I'll be really interested to know what you think. All right, let's get into the build. Okay, so Pretty much every time I start an episode off with a live play, I make all these ridiculous claims that uh, I'm going to spend the entire episode doing terraforming and I'm going to put a mountain here and I'm going to change all this. And then when I actually get into the builds, I end up going on like a different direction or end up changing a little bit of my mind. So that is um, pretty typical with the way that I uh, go into any of these sort of builds. I think I know what I'm going to do and then I start building and I change my mind, which I'm pretty sure you guys would do 
something similar when you play too. But I guess what I do keep the same with what I did talk about. Uh, we do end up changing the direction of this river and making it just a little bit closer to the downtown just to make it a little bit more unique, a bit more restricted on this um, very narrow uh, peninsula, I guess. Probably not a peninsula. Um, this this little section of land um, between the two rivers. And something like a direction that I didn't expect to take and something that you probably expect from the thumbnail. We do end up placing a cable car that crosses the river that is um, very uh, very similar to the one that is crossing the river in Chongqing. And I really love this cable car. I think there's only a, like a few of them that really do um, something similar around the world. And I just think it is a very unique and very interesting use for a cable car that I thought uh, we should probably do something similar in this city. I um, didn't think that it could do that. So I was worried that... Um, there might be like a limitation with the game, but yeah, it totally works. And I really love it and as like a way of transporting people across uh, the river. So you'll see that that's um, more towards the end of the episode. For the things that I am doing in the first bit is I'm mostly just figuring out where this river is going to go and just placing down a couple of sort of temporary, uh, temporary roads to figure out where I want some of the main highways to sit and um, I also change where some of the bridges go as well. So I do know I want these bridges crossing because they're actually fairly important. They um, they play a very important part in transporting people into the downtown and even bypassing the downtown completely. So uh, it's a bit hard to explain how they all um, interrelate, but um, I might have to do like an actual complete overview of all my road layouts. We did do something like that in the first couple of episodes, but I might give you a bit of an updated version because we have changed a little bit of the road layout and figuring out where some of the main highways go, but generally most of them do pretty much the same thing, but are just in different locations. Um, because I do tend to change my mind and, um, you know, reevaluate where things are going. So the bridge that I'm working on right now, uh, this guy pretty much diverts traffic. I mean, if you were to follow this highway all the way through, this goes um, underground, it goes or uh, goes pretty much through the downtown, but um, underneath it, and there'll be a couple of intersections, uh, big interchanges to get people um, into that actual stretch of the downtown. But it's mostly used for uh, passengers, not passengers, uh, commuters getting um, from either side of the river, and not having to go through the absolute um, heaviest parts of the downtown. So there will be some intersections so that people can actually get there, but I just figured that we will need to have, um, you know, some fairly heavy roads that are going to get people from one end to the other of the city because, you know, there's quite a large population sitting on um, either end of the river. And the really nice thing about using the ploppable Rico mod, which uh, apparently is crazy that I'm still using it because a lot of people have crazy bugs with it, but it works for me. And the really nice thing about uh, it working is that uh, a lot of the buildings that sit within the downtown are very dense. They ha they have huge amounts of jobs and there's huge amounts of uh, commerce that's sitting in there, which means that a lot of, of the outskirts of the city where most of the residential areas are, um, you know, people are pretty much trying to get to that downtown for work, which I wanted to happen because I wanted to see like a fairly large amount of people trying to get to that middle part of the city and uh, traffic like I'm totally keen for traffic <laughs> I'm like one of those people who really enjoy seeing a lot of traffic and uh, seeing how it congests up the city and seeing people moving from one place to the other you can actually see a fair bit of traffic right now all those red all those red roads pretty much means that there's uh, some pretty bad traffic going on which to be honest there's yeah some pretty bad stuff happening <laughs> in terms of the traffic but yeah, we haven't really done too much in terms of trying to fix it and trying to divert uh, cars going to different locations. So I think when we um, when we actually do an actual traffic-based episode, I think we'll be able to clear up a lot of that. So I mentioned before that I have changed a little bit of the road layout and where some of the highways connect up to. This is another section where I've changed. So this bridge originally would go through, um, would tunnel down and wouldn't go into the downtown, but I ended up changing it so that it instead goes directly into the downtown and uh, the highway pretty much finishes here. So that um, 
it's like a really good connection for people who wanted to go straight into it and rather than trying to divert traffic. And to be honest, I think we'll probably just have to see how it goes because at this stage, the traffic flow is fine. Uh, we're not getting anything crazy, but I, I, I dare say that down the track, we're probably gonna have to stick some sort of um, some sort of ramps so that we're getting some traffic flow going to different roads rather than just hitting this this uh, roundabout. But um, basically, I've just done a couple of little things. So I've made a couple of the roads connecting up to this roundabout. They're one-way roads, which added like a lot of it actually helped it helped the roundabout out quite a lot so i plan to do that around the downtown a fair bit and i've also done a couple of things with lanes and uh, traffic president so i don't know that might be enough to just keep everything flowing fairly nicely but you know like i said before not hugely concerned if we start getting a bit of traffic i just want to make sure that all my all my service vehicles are getting to the right location. So my ambulances, the hearses, the fire trucks, everything is basically getting it, uh, getting to the right places so that we're not getting too much complaint from the buildings and everything's still sort of functioning. Actually, mind you, I haven't seen a fire truck in such a long time because I have disabled uh, fires. So pretty much there's no fires that happen in my city because obviously I don't want to go to all this hard work and then watch it burn down. So I haven't seen a fire truck in probably like two years. Uh, that's a bit sad actually. I might have to I'll have to do something about that. I don't know. Maybe we'll change one of the, I don't know. We might have to subscribe to a fire truck that's actually an ambulance so we can actually see some fire trucks going around the city. But you know, in saying that you don't really see very many fire trucks in general. So just light detail work on that roundabout. Uh, putting in some foliage and I wanted to put in these hedges too. There's this really great statue that's in the middle of that roundabout and is that is such an old asset. Um, I think that's like 2015. Uh, it's one of the first ones that was ever uploaded to the workshop and it's still probably one of the best because I think it's just very, um, very iconic. I think it's from a real life city but I really love it. I haven't used it in probably about three years so it was kind of cool to pop it in a spot like that. I'm going to try and keep that section fairly uh, fairly clear so that you can see that roundabout really nicely. Uh, there's a pretty steep drop now um, from this downtown to the riverbank. There is a pretty much a straight cliff and I'm tempted to put some maybe some older style apartment blocks around there and I think some pathways and some stairs that are leading up and down. I, I think that'd be really cool. But basically, I just want to leave it fairly open so you can see the detail work in this downtown section really, really well. So because of that, I am going to do a little bit of work with the uh, with the detail. I wanted um, this building. So this is actually a building that sits in Santiago. It might even be one of the tallest buildings, if the tallest building in Santiago in Chile. And I thought that because it is such an iconic building to um, to the city now, it's actually one of the tallest buildings, uh, if not maybe the second tallest building. I thought we should probably do like a really nice plaza that sits underneath. So I really had a lot of fun just putting in the detail work for this for this plaza. Um, you can see me working with some of the custom stairs and uh, I've also put down a bit of the fence network and the concrete retaining walls again something I use all the time is one of the most versatile um, assets that I have and the vac I've actually been able to use them to create some um, some planters that sit on different levels um, just in between some of the uh, the stairways and I just think it works really nicely I also believe I used the ploppable cliffs to then create some of the garden beds, uh, the actual dirt inside the garden beds, and just using some trees, trees that are, you know, are quite a little bit taller so that they poke out the top of um, the garden beds. Works really well, and I dare say I'm going to be using a, a similar technique in other locations around here. Uh, well, I'm not going to detail the downtown huge amounts, but only the areas that I think we're going to probably be focusing on the most. And um, the other cool thing as well is that people walk um, on these, uh, on like the plaza, like the elevated section. So you do see a bit of life that's um, happening around here too. So it's not like a totally dead space with just props. Uh, people walking up and down the stairs and people are uh, interacting with some of the props, which I think is a really fun element to this section. 
I also decided to place down a little cafe or shop. I uh, just ended up using one of the vanilla uh, growables. I think it might be like a, I don't know, one of the commercial s smaller shops. But I think it's just one of those buildings that I always forget about. And when I do see it, I think uh, it's not going to fit in any of my builds. And then, I don't know, I just changed the color of it. And I think it worked kind of nicely in that location, even though it is fairly vanilla. And we're trying to go for not using very many vanilla assets in this series. But yeah, I think you just got to remember that sometimes, sometimes those sort of vanilla uh, commercial blocks or growables or whatever you end up using, they end up looking all right. And yeah, I just sometimes I forget about them in Sichuan province. And um, just uh, again, figuring out the road layout around here because it is super steep, like crazy, crazy, crazy steep. Which is fine because most of uh, Chongqing is fairly steep at gradient and that was sort of the point of going into this series was to uh, really um, challenge myself in terms of uh, the landscape. Uh, and that was actually another reason why I changed the way that the river ran um, because I just felt like it it was actually a little bit too easy and I wanted it to be really challenging uh, particularly with the roads and the types of buildings I was going to use uh, I think that I really need some crazy steep gradients to uh, achieve the the sort of look that I want to achieve so it just means that I, I'm not gonna do a very standard grid based city and Chongqing is just not grid based uh, it's not a grid based city anyway I mean some areas might be a little bit but mostly around the downtown and uh, around the riverside they generally follow the contours of the landscape and this river plays such a huge factor in the way that the roads are all connected up so now I'm having a bit of a crack at the network for the cable car and just trying to figure out how this thing works because this is actually the first time I've used it I've never never laid down one of these before so I yeah I was a little bit challenged with how it works and using it probably in a manner that it's not really designed for so um i decided to place it up on this like hillside on the other side of the river and then when it connects up to the downtown i thought it'd be really cool if it was actually part of one of the um one of the main malls of the downtown so this is actually where the the main the largest building of uh the city is and i just thought that would be really cool uh touristic elements to the city so I kind of imagined that you'd enter the cable car within the mall and on the other side of the river where the um, the cable car finishes. I'm probably going to stick maybe some sort of commercial di district over there or it might just be mostly residential. I haven't really quite figured that part out yet. But uh, I just thought it'd be really cool, yeah, just to connect it up to the mall. And at the moment, no one's catching it because there's no one on the other side. Uh, there's no, like, there's not any road connection as well. I'm really just trying to figure out where it's going to go. But um, it's going to be great when you're seeing people getting across the river using it for transportation. I, I have a feeling that it's going to be very popular because we're um, going to be transporting people from some very dense locations within the city. And um, just thought I'd create a bit of a plaza. One of the um, things I'm struggling with the most in this series is the ground texture being just concrete. I've noticed that in China, uh, it's mostly tiles that make up the... Uh, the general pavements around um, like the plazas and around the sidewalks so it's really tricky to capture that when you're trying to work with just pavement or like a concrete color so I've been trying to use some decals but uh, because I'm not again using a grid like uh, pattern in terms of my road layout I, um, I'm really struggling because we're getting a lot of curves and the types of decals that I'm using for the tiles they're just not really working very nicely. So if you have any ideas of ways that I can tackle that, I sort of, I don't know, I'm sort of leaning towards, and I don't know if this is ever going to happen, but I'm sort of leaning towards maybe getting some sort of custom, uh, custom map theme where I can, you know, maybe part of the texture or maybe there's, um, you know, two types of pavements. One of them is the regular pavement that you see and then another one might be tiles. I don't know, I'm, uh, this is like an idea. Let me know if you're interested in creating some sort of custom um, custom map thing, but I don't know if anyone's interested in going down that path. I just thought it might be interesting to have like two types of pavements that I could switch between. One was tiles, one was just a standard type, and that way it would be much easier to actually create these sort of um, these sidewalks that I wanted to, and those plazas too, because it actually takes a lot of time figuring out how the tiles are going to work. 
but now we're getting like further out of the main square of the downtown and going down the cliff side towards the river we're going to be going into a bit more residential and um, also probably like some parks and pathways and um, things like that I um really loved the way that this car park sort of interacted with the cable car support and I also just had to be really careful with the types of um, buildings that I was using because I didn't want to just completely block the view of the cable car. I um, wanted it to have like a really nice interaction with the buildings and uh, the landscape, but also like enough clearance from the buildings and enough clearance from the ground. And that was kind of challenging. So um, I decided to use this car park. Um, this was like, this is like a Japanese, but I think it's called, it's, it's like part of like a Japanese car park pack and it's just such a it's like a really amazing pack because they're just shaped in a particular angle it means you'd have to create custom car parks all the time and it just means that because it's shaped on this like l shape you can put a um like a building in that little pocket and i just think that works really well Guys, that is it for this episode. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then don't forget to leave some nice feedback by rating up the video or just letting me know what you think of the build in the comment section below. Next week, I'm going to probably do another Sichuan Province episode and there might even be a Marble, Marble Mountain episode too. You might get a double one. I'm kind of on holidays at the moment, so I'm sort of just in the mood for building and releasing vids. So if you are excited for that, then let me know. I'm pretty keen to um, whip out some extra material over the next couple of weeks. But that is it. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Much appreciated. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.